Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about Viola Spolin. Who is she? You should know, Viola Spolin is like the godmother of improv, okay? She is really basically um, credited with, with, with creating modern day improv. Her and Keith Johnstone was born in uh, 1906 and she passed away in 1994, so pretty recently. Uh, and, and her teachings basically started in 1939 in, in Chicago. Viola Spolin didn't start off in the theater. She actually started off in administration. And her early games were designed for children. In fact, most people really look at her and, and her work uh, as being more uh, children-based. But, but honestly, her games can be applied to any situation. She didn't come from theater, like I said, um, and uh, she came about in this time of time of uh, theater called the Great Reform, which which was really um, the theater was changing a lot and and sort of uh, what it wanted to be and how you how you taught it and 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 Spolin's work um, really emphasized that change and, and made it av available for. For her new her new ideas to really come about, her work really did sort of get popular though. After her son, her son is actually her name uh, his name is Paul Sills, and her son actually was the founder of Second City, and so that's why she's synonymous with improv is because uh, Paul and the Second City they they used her improv games all over the place and and basically used her mother's ideas to uh, and incorporate them, incorporated them into learning theater and so now today you have all these different types of uh, games and, and, and learning activities that improv troops use whether it's short or long-term form uh, to teach spontaneous um, acting and, and also listening and um, and focusing on your partner how does Spolin teach uh, well she is very very she's very much um, student centered uh, she is you are focusing on showing and not telling you are you, you're you're really focused on in the moment spontaneity and and if you ever heard of the term yes and she didn't coin that term but um, those principles of of working off of another of, of another actor and and accepting uh, what that other actor does and building on top of it is definitely principles that she, she, she teaches. She also teaches things like intuition and how to build intuition. She's also working on actors' confidence um, and in, in, in showing actors that they can really be themselves on stage and be vulnerable on stage. She doesn't, she doesn't want actors to be inhibited by over over analyzing right she wants she wants people to go with the flow and and, and to really surrender to the the, the scene or what, what, what's being talked about um, also that the the audience is a, is a, a crucial part of, uh, of the game and that um, uh, the audiences are not uh, to be forgotten about like like in a traditional um, proscenium style, uh, stage where where there's the fourth wall and you 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 know everything that's blo you know that's dark from the lights that's just you pretend that's part of the set right no 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 here we we're we're using the audience we're incorporating the audience and and feeding feeding off the audience we're also talking about things like the point of con uh, point of concentration which is your main focus uh, on the stage and and what it is that you're trying to to accomplish so you'll encounter Spolin games in a variety of different ways. If you're an undergraduate, you definitely will probably play one of her games. Every uh, undergraduate actor has played the, the the mirror exercise, right? Or or freeze, you know, where where a scene is going on and you're watching the game, uh, watching the scene unfold, and you say freeze, and then you go up there and you tap someone out and come back. That's that's Spolin. If you're looking to do a workshop of hers, you can find those workshops where it's just simply uh, Spolin Games uh, internationally or uh, through in the United States. One that you could do at home, activity called gibberish. And gibberish, I'm sure you probably encountered before, but uh, how you how you could apply it to your audition 
is say you have a chunk of text which you don't really understand and say um, say the chunk of text is is explaining how to get to a uh, a place up on top of that hill and say you're say for some re reason you're just having trouble vocalizing that and and putting it in your own words you can use gibberish to get out of your head and to uh, loosen loosen your 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 mouth and and to to um, get, understand the tone of, of what's happening so here's an example of what gibberish would be if I'm trying to explain to another actor to to go over there on top of the mountain Dubba doop, doopy goo, doopa dooba doo, doopa dooba dooba rama doo, chupa chew, a kappa doopa dee, ba da, oopa doo, chapa doopa chapa too, oopa dooba chapa da, oba dabba da, da da, da da. Nonsense, complete gibberish. It looks ridiculous, and you feel, and I feel silly for for doing it, but but um, but it it, it helps uh when you're when you're doing a monologue, it helps. Or, in, or, in, or anything really, it helps you just get get the gist of what you're doing. Uh, so, so I, I'm explaining, I'm guiding, I am navigating. Right? It helps you just forget about the text and get out of your head. And so, try gibberish at home uh, if you're working on an audition or any or any piece for that matter. Uh, it's a really great uh, game that you don't need any other actors around, and that Spolin created. That, that's the point of this this video here is, is is not to dive deep in her her philosophies or her pedagogy it's really to uh, to honor her and to uh, and to really identify that she's popping up in so many forms of your your um, education that that you may not recognize and so in the comments below if there's an activity that you really like or there's a theater game that you really resonate with you share down below and um, and share with our, our community here and we can and we can sort of build a repertoire of different games to play. Um, so in the meantime, thanks for watching. Share and like if you can. And make sure to check out the resources below because there's a lot more information on Spolin to be to learn. And there's a lot of great examples of some of her uh, activities. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.